All right, you guys, so welcome back to another live stream here on the Sergeant Take YouTube channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and do me a favor. Smash that subscribe button down below, turn on those post notifications, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get to it. So we got cherry shrimp here in this tank. Uh, so I'm working on some different lineage and so forth. If you guys have been following the channel long enough, uh, you would know that I've been breeding different variants of uh, dwarf shrimp for 12 plus years now. Uh, so again i don't know how well this is going to show up here uh you can see uh one of the females right here in the front it will focus i will get to everybody in the chat i uh, just kind of want to run through these tanks a minute uh the camera's trying to focus let me uh and we got some mystery snails in here uh the lighting we're just going to have to work with it Still working on the lighting in this uh, area, especially for uh, filming and so forth. Uh, we got some various handlers and guppies in this tank. Uh, you can see a male and female here in the front. And uh, there's a bunch of fry as well into this tank. Uh, so just, I'm kind of going left to right, so just kind of keep a visual note. Um, let's run through these uh, kind of fairly quickly because I'm not going to be doing a long live stream. Uh, working on some lineage here. Uh, this is a uh, uh, female here. You can tell it was just recently holding. Uh, must have released not too long ago. Uh, working on uh, line breeding this specific tank. I have by far uh, one of the largest uh, Neocaridinia uh, Sakura grade shrimp. There, female in the back. I'm not sure if that's going to show up very well. She is pushing two plus inches. I'm not even joking. Uh, Twelve better plus of 12 years now of breeding shrimp. By far one of the most stunning and largest uh, neocaridinia shrimp that I've seen. But that just goes to show time uh, and patience is key. Uh, we have the uh, Maculatus uh, gold leopard platys. We got uh, mom and dad there in the back. I just recently pulled some fry out of this tank. Uh, but uh, yeah, so just not too much happening here besides a couple of spawning mops. Got some mystery snails going. This is a 10 gallon tank, uh, which does very, very well when it comes to breeding these guys. And uh, we do have these on the website as well. Um, not that size, of course, uh, juvenile and sub-adult. Uh, we got some Pulselia wing eye. These are your uh, rainbow tiger, um, or rainbow endlers, I'm sorry, not your rainbow tiger. I will show you a rainbow tiger here in a second, but uh, that's not in this tank. Uh, so I have some fry here. I'll show you about three tanks down. Uh, so you can see males and females there. Uh, absolutely one of my favorite endlers, has been for a long time. Uh, just like with any live bearing species, very easy to breed uh, given the appropriate conditions and so forth. So they do a fairly decent job as far as um, raising up the fry. Uh, they can be a little bit uh, fin nippy, so I usually, even with the guppies, I try to go ahead and pull the fry um, and so forth. But yeah, so uh, same thing with the platys. Um, just to ensure that my lines aren't being depleted potentially. Um, but yeah. Uh, the amphibian fish channel said, okay, I was going to say, it shouldn't be upside down. Um, all right, here, we're getting some feedback. Have absolutely no lighting on this thing. You're not able to see anything. Uh, not too many cherry shrimp left in there. Uh, this is your mycogeophagus during blue ram cichlids. Uh, so I will be splitting these guys off. Uh, they have now spawned about four different times. And I'll see if I can show you guys before this ends some of the fry. Uh, but I will be doing a more in-depth video. Um, just like with anything, it's not difficult to get it initially to spawn. Uh, however, these are one of the most challenging and uh, very long time uh, as being a hobbyist and aquarist uh, when it comes to rearing and raising of the fry. So there are some tips and tricks uh, when it comes to that. Uh, but they are very, very small to fry. That's why it makes it a bit challenging. Uh, we have uh, some Neocaridinia heteropoda in here. Uh, not too many left in this tank. This will be a rearing and grow out tank for some more endlers here in the future, so not really too much to show there. Uh, this is the uh, Pulselia wing eye rainbow endlers here. Uh, <clears throat> I just showed you the parents of, so we have some grow outs and juveniles in this tank. And then uh, more, <clears throat> more uh, line bridge. Uh, variants of your Neocaridinia uh, cherry shrimp. Um, all right, moving on down the line. Uh, this is your black moor. 
Uh, so yeah, there's three of those in there along with some um, zebra danios. They're absolutely beautiful. Pick those guys up at an auction. Uh, we have some more uh, line breeding that I'm working on right now. This is your Neocaridinia heteropoda, uh, carbon really variants along with a cross of your um, Blue Dreams. So you can see one of the Blue Dreams here in the front. If the camera will focus. Yeah, not wanting to focus. It's trying to focus. Um, let's see here. See a female here in the front. This is a carbon really. And then we have uh, some guppies up here. Uh, hi Sergeant Tank, England here. Thank you so much for stopping in. Love to see you guys that are abroad and outside of the states. Uh, so thank you so much for stopping in. It really means a lot. Uh, this is some of our rescues here. Um, so we got uh, three uh, red-eared sliders in the stock tank. Uh, all three females. And then I also have a female that's in quarantine right now. Um, she got beat up. But, uh, so, this is actually a terrapin, but you're not going to be able to see it. Uh, we got more cherry shrimp down here. And then, uh, eventually, a cherry shrimp will be available on the website. It's just not going to be anytime soon. Um, then these are your blue star endlers. Unfortunately, I lost um, all of the males. My tank crashed on me, so I don't have any of the adult males to show you, but uh, you can Google it. A uh, really nice strain of um, of an endler. So just put in Blue Star Endler, and it'll pop up an image. Uh, we got some Snowball uh, Neocaridinia Shrimp. Uh, Fish Fam Aquatics, absolutely. Um, um, it's a great uh, great thing to do. I will get to that in just a moment, so bear with me. i uh, got a couple of African cichlids left uh, here. And uh, I've already auctioned or donated, uh, donated the majority of them um, and sold some of uh, my other ones. I want to say I had 18, 20, so did get out of the whole African cichlid thing. Um, went ahead and, and opened up space. But uh, these are your Epistogramma panduro. Uh, in here so uh, this is uh, we'll be breeding these guys uh, the gentleman I got them from uh, didn't have a really successful time with breeding them but uh, basically uh, pistogramma variant like your mycogeophagus more or less uh, same same aspects and so forth are generally going to uh, fall into place when you're breeding uh, this specific uh, family or species of fish um, for the most part. So uh, I've been very successful. I used to breed these guys prolifically about 10 years ago. Just a lot of time goes into the mycogeophagus. So um, yeah, so I'm not too worried about it, but those will be the next breeding project. I just picked those up uh, last week. Uh, these guys are on the website. These are your Black Emperor Tetras. They get a little bit larger for your Tetra. Uh, I want to say we have oh dozen, so definitely check it out if you guys are interested. Uh, like I said, have those on the website. Uh, these are your Stetocranus urbani. Um, these are a larger shell dwelling species. Uh, they're more of a, a rock dwelling. I, I don't even know if you would even say shell dwelling uh, my thoughts on that of course yeah you can use shells um, but if you do rock piles i mean if you look at it from a natural standpoint depending on uh, where they um, where they gravitate to depending on what water uh, and so forth they come from that's where kind of your due diligence comes in when you're getting into breeding projects to so try to 
if you're trying to mimic some of that uh, nature, uh, if it comes to something that you're having a little bit difficult time with breeding uh, in home captivity, then I will go ahead and, and try to mimic uh, some of those um, natural uh, uh, waterways. But uh, these guys are still in quarantine. We've got 20 of those in there. Um, more spawning mops. Uh, we have the Celestial Pearl Danios along with uh, some guppy grow outs in there. So we got some males and females, got some panda guppies. You can see one starting to color up a little bit right there on top. Um, but if you want the kind of act as a dither uh, to get your CPDs out and more active, throw them in with some guppies. Uh, they get along just fine. Uh, neither one harass each other. I wanna say we have 20 of the CPDs left. Those are also on the website. Uh, so you can definitely check it out. Uh, those guys are available. They've already gone through quarantine. Uh, we got some of the uh, uh, Blue Paradise Garami here. So these are uh, another stunning fish. Uh, this is more or less the introductory fish um, from this beautiful hobby as we see it today. So uh, this is actually one of the very first introductory fish into this uh, amazing freshwater uh, hobby. So uh, they're absolutely um, a stunning. This is the um, macroba, um, that one right there. <laughs> I'm not even going to even try to pronounce the species name, but there you go. So it's commonly known as a blue paradise fish. Usually I can count or I can pronounce most species names, but that is just one there that's a, a tongue twister. I don't think I have enough coffee today um, <laughs> to pronounce it appropriately, but uh, we got five of the. Uh, black Venezuela corridor species. Uh, so these are absolutely, uh, I think Kevin has, um, if Kevin's still here, let me know Kevin if I, uh, it slipped my mind um, if you have this this variant or if you have a different variant. Um, love me those black horries, okay. Uh, mine just hatch. All right, you, so you do have the back, black Venezuela. So you don't see them too, too often. Um, so I'm happy for you. Uh, these guys, I haven't put a whole lot of time, to be honest with you, uh, into breeding. And I think, unfortunately, I only ended up with uh, uh, one female, it looks like. So these guys are now solely in a 55, um, just kind of as a grow out right now. I've uh, been moving things around and, and so forth. But, yeah, uh, these are the Clark Eye um, crayfish. Again, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of... Uh, no one has enough coffee. Yeah, I concur. Uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. These are an invasive species, so you, these are illegal. Um, you, can, you can't you can sell or distribute these at all. So these are just mine, and this is where they're going to stay um, for the rest of their lifetime. Um, but, yeah, so uh, unfortunately I'm not breeding these anymore. I'm kind of just getting away from uh, most of the crayfish in general. It's just not a big, big demand. Um, and then these are your rainbow tiger antlers. So you can see uh, a female there um, that I'm crossing with. And then uh, this is a rainbow tiger antler. Uh, this is actually from Lucas, so LRB Aquatics. Um, I don't know if he's currently selling these or if he's sold out of them. Um, but by far a absolutely stunning line uh, that he actually more or less created uh, through his home aquaria. So, um yeah, it's not, it's not gonna, that doesn't do it justice. Um, so I'm just playing around with these guys right now and seeing what happens. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> just move those crypt species up here in this uh, aquascape tank. Uh, this is a seven and a half gallon cube. I don't have any peacock gudgeons. I don't. Um, so yeah, nothing besides plants in there right now. So maybe over the weekend, who knows? Um, we'll see. We got a betta down here in this tank. And then, uh, we have some of the parthenogenic crayfish, lots of spawning mops. If you want to breed these guys and keep them safe, especially the fry, uh, layer it with spawning mops, like you see. Um, so not going to go through too much of that. Uh, I pretty much use these guys as feeders at this point. They are still available um, on the website, but the turtles absolutely love them. 
Uh, let's see here. We got uh, more various guppies in here. Lots of uh, Naha grass that I'm growing out. Uh, eventually, I'll probably end up selling some of that on the website once I get enough. Um, I have quite a bit going on right now, to be honest with you. But, yeah, I want you, you can always have more. Uh, so we got uh, various ram's horn mystery snails. Um, we got some sisters plecos in here. So this is a community breeding setup. It's a 20 long. <coughs> Turtle food, crayfish on the half shell. Um, and then this is that, uh, I think I'm trying to back out here. Yeah, it looks like my phone still zoomed in, but it's not letting me focus back out. Uh, so let's see here. Um, I made a mess here a little too, not too long ago. I was filling up uh, my reservoirs here, my holding tanks, and I uh, wasn't paying attention. I completely, uh, needless to say, uh, made a mess. Some water. But uh, let's take, take a look at here at some of the fry. Yeah, I'm definitely f zoomed in. Sorry if it's making the bubbling noise in the background. I don't think I have my uh, my sound turned off. Um, these are your German Blue Ram cichlids. Um, let me see if I can find one of them in here. These guys are absolutely like microscopic in size. Um, about 10 years ago when I used to breed these, um, they would eat microworms all day long. Uh, just fine. I never had any issues. However, this specific lineage, um, uh, for some reason, uh, a lot of it could be the embryo size just due to the fact of in the nature to it. Uh, I, more or less from the standpoint, my theory and basis behind it is the embryos were kind of small. Um, so in theory, obviously, when those hatched out, um, needless to say, it probably produced a a smaller strain of, of your microgeos. Um, so obviously the smaller they are, the harder it's going to be for them to um, scavenger and obtain the food that they need to within their um, diet. So now what I do is I, I culture uh, vinegar eels, uh, which is very, very simple to do, uh, even more so than microworms. Um, you can pretty much sit them and forget them. So that's what they're feeding off from now. And if I go slow here, I can probably kick one up so you can see, hopefully. And these are peat granules um, along with some catapa leaves, uh, which help uh, the acidic level that I'm looking for along with some natural plants because they will scavenger on these um, and they'll actually hide in that. Uh, Fintime said, <clears throat> what's, uh, what is in the tubs? Um, if you're talking about the stock tanks I showed just a few moments ago, uh, one of them is, uh, kind of a community. I can go back to that here in a few moments. So if you're talking about the large black stock tanks, let me know. I can go back over there. So I lost, unfortunately, the majority of these guys just due to the fact that I was waiting for my vinegar eels to come in, and uh, yeah, so there's I know if there's one or two in here because I just checked them this morning and fed them, but um, if they don't eat, they're not going to live, so fortunately, there wasn't a whole lot I could do about it. Um, you can try other, other methods. I mean, they will eat like a powder form, but it's just not, not my cup of tea. Uh, I definitely prefer live foods um, over anything like that, especially with fry, because I want to start them off right and then slowly transition them over. Um, because I look at the longevity of my livestock, so I don't care if I can get these guys up until, you know, juvenile size. I'm looking, will these guys make it, you know, three, four years down the road, five years, six years, you know. I want, I want the longest living fish I possibly can have. This is kind of my... My thought process behind it. Uh, yeah, Mark, there is rapashi powder. Uh, it's just not, not necessarily my cup of tea. Because um, I keep all the fry here in these tanks. And I would have to be doing... Um, I will be doing an advancement of this system in the future. And once it's on an auto 
uh, change system so kind of a heads up there I do plan on doing that and transitioning this over so it's going to be similar to what it is but it's going to make my life a little bit easier and then I wouldn't mind going that route and maybe doing like a like a rapache or like a powder form um, but I honestly don't want to be doing water changes 10 times a day um, to worry about uh, pollutants and stuff like that but I have some uh, let's see here <clears throat> this is just methylene blue uh, this is uh, um, this is your uh, um, killifish, so your orange liar tail killies. Um, so I got some embryos from the 30th that I'm hatching out in here. Uh, what's up, Dion? Uh, so let me show you what the daisies or daisies. Yeah, I'll show you those in a second. I do have some daisies rice fish too, um, and then I have some Thai placat bettas. Uh, so from 9:22. There's two, and then from 10-3, I added one more. Um, so these guys are about twice the size when they come out, but if you look at the embryo size, it only makes sense, right? Um, so if you guys have ever bred killifish or mycogeophagus, and you'll know what I mean. Um, but uh, these guys are doing absolutely well. So when these guys hatch out in about two, two and a half weeks, um, doing water incubation, I will do a full in-depth video on this. Uh, sometimes you can get them hatching out in a week and a half. It just depends. Um, you can see one of them here. Uh, but when they do hatch out, they're almost two and a half times the size of a, of a mycogeophagus. So um, I don't know. Uh, maybe I just started out with a very difficult fish um, when I was breeding uh, mycogeos, you know, 10 plus years ago. Uh, you know, it's just, I guess when you start out at a difficult level, um, then makes your life a little bit easier when you start doing other stuff because a lot of those same common practices you can apply um, when it comes to other non live bearing species. So I don't change a whole lot um, in my methods between the things I'm showing here that are through this incubation and grow out. Uh, these are some daisies rice fish that I have uh, from 922. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys. These guys are hatched out. These guys will hatch out similar to the killifish within about a week and a half, two weeks. Um, just depends. Let's see if we can uh, grab my light here. So you can see one of the fry there. And these guys will feed off from mica worms um, right off the bat. But uh, uh, if you want to start them on like vinegar eels and then transition them over to mica worms as they grow, then that's fine too. Um, but I do find that these guys will feed fine. I've had no issues as far as loss feeding these guys off from mica worms. And of course, we do sell the mica worm cultures, starter cultures on the website. And eventually, I will do the vinegar eels in the future. Uh, but not right now. I just don't want to add anything more to my plate. I really wish I could get my phone to zoom out for you guys. I apologize about that, but uh, I don't want to mess around with it too much because we got a good thing going, it seems like. So I feel like if I mess around with my phone, I'm going to end up messing something up. And I don't want to do that. And let's see here. These are your Thai placat bettas. These are absolutely, um, uh, these are some size uh, when they hatch out to the uh, killifish. A little bit smaller. Um, these guys are putting on a lot of size. Um, these guys are very easy to, well, for me. <laughs> When I say easy, I mean it, it's a lot easier than, uh, nothing compares yet to the mycogeophagus. Um, I will say out of the things I personally have bred here in my home aquaria uh, and through my years of experience. So, um, but yeah, I will be doing uh, how-to how to tutorials on how I go about breeding these guys and raising and growing out the fry. But there's a bunch of them in here. And they're kind of blending in right now because of the tannins. 
Uh, Mary Beth, hello. Uh, multi tank addiction, hello. Uh, so you can see one of them down there, right in the center of the screen right now. So these guys are putting on nice size. These guys are from September 21st, so that's when I pulled. And I, I'm not going to go into showing how I do that. I will show you uh, in a feature tutorial um, how to breed each one of these in depth. It'll probably be about a 12 to 15 minute video. Uh, boom, 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 going right from one thing to the next uh, so it's not dragged out because I want to keep people's attention and keep their interest um, in it. But uh, more or less... Uh, just picture that these guys have been free swimming as of about a week and a half after that. So uh, 10 days roughly. So right around the 1st, I would say this these guys became free swimming. So I've been feeding uh, Michael Worms to these guys for, where are we at, the 10th? I don't even know what the date is. Uh, 10th, 11th. Um, so I have more Thai Placots in here. Um, this is actually a mixed match. Um, uh, Fish Fam Aquatics said, just got your shipment in. Uh, well, thank you so much. How did it show up? Um, let me know everything is uh, doing well for you. If you can give me a thumbs up. Um, so if you guys haven't checked it out, I did do a how-to tutorial on how I go about shipping. Uh, so you guys can definitely check that out if you want to. I've done other tutorials, uh, done live streams on how to go about shipping. Um, but, uh, yeah, so knock on wood, I've had very limited issues through the years when it comes to shipping, but you can never be a hundred percent. So, uh, let's see here. All right. So somebody was asking me, I think what was in these stock tanks. So we have various guppies, mystery snails, uh, uh, Ancestrus plecos, uh, all in this 100 gallon stock tank. And then this stock tank over here uh, is our rescues of uh, turtles. So I kind of do like a rescuing project, not only with fish, but also uh, with, with other things as well. So these guys are doing well. Um, all three females, uh, these are all three red ear sliders in this tank. And then I also have in quarantine right now. Um, this is a, uh, terrapin in this tank. So, and then here is the, uh, male and female. So we have the male here. It's not going to show up too well. These are the bettas. All right, Fish Fam Aquatics said everything arrived alive. Nice pack. Well, thank you so much. You just made my day 10% better. Um, so, yeah. So, we got male there. We got female here. Coloration. These guys aren't popping right now. Um... And then, yes, I do use bio balls, uh, the same concept of that of which I use pot scrubbers. Uh, so the reason I float bio balls is these guys, each one of these houses beneficial bacteria. I would be confident to say that I could take one of these um, over once it's seeded. So these guys have only been in here uh, for about three months now. And uh, once they're fully seeded, then let's say even a year, two years down the road, I'll be confident to say I could go ahead and take one of these and it would house enough beneficial bacteria to start a five gallon tank. And uh, one of those alone. Um, just through some tests that I've done in the past, uh, when it comes to that, people don't realize how much, how much beneficial bacteria can be housed. I find oftentimes people are over filtering um, and trust me, the reason I know that, let me flip the camera around, um, if it's going to let me. All right, you guys, so 
I'm going to be wrapping this video up anyways. Uh, we're going on about a half hour. It's about 15 minutes more than what I wanted to, but that's fine because I want to be able to get enough in. I appreciate you guys showing up. I wanted to try this out. Hopefully, after this processes, um, I don't have to do any editing, so I can just upload it and, uh, and do something different with the thumbnail. But other than that, I'm just trying it out again uh, as I've done it before in the past. But I do want to keep these shorter. Uh, about 12 to 15 minutes in the future so let me know what you guys think after this if i end up letting it upload which i do plan on doing that um just kind of my way uh maybe once a week um just kind of make my life a little bit easier uh just to kind of do it at my own leisure pop on here um since i did not get a video out being thursday thursday is usually our update day it's just been extremely hectic and busy that's why you haven't seen me uh too much um uh within the interwebs but uh so yeah i want to appreciate each and every one of you guys um if there's anything that you have any questions about uh definitely go ahead and leave it in the comments below after this uploads but with that being said you guys um wanted to thank you guys uh for your continued support and uh yeah check everything out down in the description below uh link to our website and you can check everything that we have on there from from livestock and dry goods and so forth so with that being said, you guys, make it a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you on the next one.